but I think two fundamental reasons. Um, one of them is that, so, this is what we're gonna be talking about today. This is a set of bonds that go by the, that goes by the name of thermodynamic uncertainty relations. So yeah, the first reason that it's close to my heart is that I think um, besides David's work that's presented in the previous lecture, this is about seriously ongoing research. So we are gonna be talking about maybe two or three of them. We are gonna be driving one of them from the fluctuation theorems, okay? But uh, if I tell you that there are at least 50 of them out there, believe me, because it's true, okay? So why do they come with so many different flavors and just like so many different, you know, expressions? It's because they are bonds that actually are written in terms of the, I mean, that, that, that capture the conditions that you impose on the system and the system's dynamical evolution. We are gonna see it, we are gonna discuss it. So this is the first reason. But the second reason is that, so during this course, we've been always talking about that uh, resources, right? So there's a resource, what is like the you know, minimal something something, minimal cost of actually um, carrying some process, okay? Minimal, when you're given a minimal resource, how do you carry out a task efficiently and so on and so forth. So these guys, they talk about it. Okay, so let's go back to equilibrium statistical physics just to sort of give like a big perspective, okay? So what we had in equilibrium statistical physics was that, okay, you have this isolated system and the sort of like the fundamental thing that you get on this is that all the microstates are equally likely. And when you write down the Boltzmann, Gibbs-Boltzmann distribution, uh, basically you have a universal principle that is guiding you to derive the thermodynamic properties of the system, such as temperature or pressure and so on and so forth, right? So, and also there is a source of, um, there is, there's a kind of an expression which we call the second law that kind of looks like a resource constraint because it tells you, it dictates what kind of a physical process is allowed or not. Only those that actually increase the entropy are allowed, right? Um, so, when it comes to non-equilibrium states, so we are considering mesoscopic systems, right? Small fluctuating systems. They're incredibly, incredibly exposed to fluctuations. And this means that, yes, okay, they're often also far from equilibrium. So, can we find a universal principle uh, that actually identifies the behavior of the systems as we did in equilibrium statistical physics? The answer seems like no, because they come in such again, in different flavors, in different types. But what we can do is, for example, we know how to identify an equilibrium steady states, right? How do we identify an equilibrium steady states? We know it, right? It's a question, seriously, like, okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, how do we identify an equilibrium steady states? No, 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 just don't. Okay, this is a detailed balance, but how, this is a detailed balance, what you're mentioning is that. But basically, the way that we identify non-equilibrium steady states is that you have non-vanishing currents, you have entropy production, okay? You have non-zero entropy production, you have dissipation, you have an entropy cost of actually maintaining a process, a thermodynamic process, it's non-equilibrium steady state. By the way, this is like the, one of the take home messages, okay? We, we need to be, we should definitely know this with our hearts, it, it must be encoded there. So uh, one of the things that we can do when we have an equilibrium steady state is that also, uh, depending on this uh, definition of like this dissipation and the non-vanishing fluxes, we know that if you have a time independent driving protocol, and okay, I'm going to abbreviate it as MESS, okay? I don't wanna keep saying non-equilibrium steady state because it's too long, I get tired. Um, so when you have something like that and time independent driving protocol, what you have is basically a constant average entropy production rate. And when you have something like an average entropy production rate being constant, we can write down beautiful, lovely, and really, I don't know, friendly fluctuation theorems, okay? Like for example, like this one. These are the fluctuation, I mean, this is a form of a fluctuation relation, a detailed fluctuation relation. We, I think we saw also the inter integral fluctuation relations yesterday, okay? So this is basically suggesting that 
this is a universal formula, okay? Maybe it's not stating some universal principle like as an equilibrium statistical physics, but we cannot have these universal principle because now what we have for the entropy production is that entropy production becomes a random variable, okay? It's exposed to fluctuations. We need to speak in terms of probability distributions. We need to concentrate on the statistics that define these thermodynamic quantities such as entropy production. So this is as universal as we can get. This is basically saying that it is exponentially more probable that you observe an increase in the stochastic entropy or entropy when you actually compare it to the probability of, uh, probability of observing a decrease, a corresponding decrease in entropy, okay? So, this is one form of a detailed fluctuation relation, but one other set of relations, a more like an expanded version, actually not only include entropy production, but some currents, okay? We are going to be defining them formally, okay? Currents are basically some, think of it as like some set of physical quantities that actually contribute to this change in the entropy as your system evolves, okay? So today, by using that kind of a joint fluctuation theorem, we are going to derive a set of complementary uh, relations called the thermodynamic uncertainty relations, one of them, okay? And what these guys do is basically providing an understanding of the minimal energetic cost to maintain some physical process if you want to satisfy, you know, some amount of um, precision, which is like given in, in terms of inverse uncertainty. But to make it more precise, because when, when I say it like that, it's just like words in the air. First, I'm going to put a verbal statement, okay? So the first TUR, it was derived in 2015. You can go and check this one. And in the context of, is anyone interested in biology? <laughs> there was a head going like, no. <laughs> that was, okay, that's perfect. It was derived in the context of biochemical reactions. Because the question they, they asked was the following. Okay, stochastic thermodynamics is good and cool, and you can universally bond some fluctuations, but, 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 but. let's say, of an enzymatic reaction. So this is the between, this is the end. Between this guy, okay, we are, we are going to, we want to say something about the uncertainty or the precision of some physical quantity that we want to relate to the thermodynamic cost, okay? I'm going to say process, but take it as like a, I don't know, biochemical reaction, okay? Mm, the reaction process. Okay, is the main message clear? Because if that, that is not clear, then we're not gonna be able to get beyond and about this. Okay? But give me feedback. If you don't give me feedback, I feel really, I feel sad, like seriously sad. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, um, so we talked about, okay, we are asking this question basically, and it's, it can be, I think, summarized as, we wanna do that because it's useful because we think biological systems actually do it. And we think, um, you know, to design really more efficient computers, you need to be able to do that too, 
Okay, you need to be, you need to have as like little amount of an uncertainty as possible. Okay, so let's start with actually a minimal system. Uh -huh, yeah. Bound. Bound, yes, exactly. Bound precision by dissipation. You want to provide a bound on the precision by dissipation. By the, I mean, you can think of also as like the uncertainty bound by dissipation. Could you maybe actually write down the definition of dissipation? I will come to that, but if you, if you don't get the intuition of it, the formula won't mean anything, I think. Okay, I'm, I will come to that, I'm doing it. So let's start with a minimal model. Okay, this is the system. So non-equilibrium steady state. I am coupling it to one heat bath. Is it enough to have non-equilibrium steady state? Or am I coupling it to multiple heat baths? Okay. Multiple heat baths. Okay, I'm gonna tell why then. But let's say one, but two. If you don't have, if you don't want to have an unequilibrium steady state, you can just couple it to one heat bath, and you're good to go. But so just let's rem remember this one. Um, There is an implicit time dependence. Let me write it just like that. Okay, this is the master equation that's describing the system dynamics, right? So we got it, we know it. Okay, that's perfect. So one of the things that we wanna do is also, I want to sort of emphasize it if you don't know the difference between sort of like, if you, whether you, what happens whether you couple it to like one heat pad or multiple heat pads. There is an implicit sum here. When you couple this system to multiple heat pads, this actually is this term, which is basically encoding the probability of making a transition per unit time. It's, it's just the sum of the contributions of each heat pad, pad V, because when you couple a system to multiple heat paths, you know that system is gonna make a jump, right? You know that the, this, this thermodynamics of different heat paths, they're actually imposing some dynamics of the system, okay? But you don't know which jump will it make and for, for, for I mean, due to how, due, due to which coupling it will jump. So there is actually an implicit sum when you have multiple heat paths. This is actually in um, Esposito and Van den Broek, like page three or something like that. You need, to, you need to see that, okay? And indeed, you need, if you need to have non-equilibrium steady state, you're having multiple rats. Okay, so that's good. So uh, we can define a trajectory, right? We are evolving the system. We have, okay, continuous time and space, but discrete set of like the states or the configurations of the system that the system can visit, okay? So let's use little, like this baby omega and define it as, let's say that this is the initial state that your system is in at time t0, okay? And then you're going to jump to another system, uh, sorry, another state. Up, up, up. So I'm going to keep writing this up until to xn, tn, vn. Um, where basically Tn is your final time of the dynamical evolution. So system evolves between time zero and T, okay? So what this trajectory encodes is the successive set of states that the system is visiting, okay? I'm jumping, I'm here initially at T0, I'm in the state X0, and I'm jumping to X1 at T1 by the, uh, by the effect of the heat path V1, okay? And then you can basically encode all of these um, history of the states in this kind of a trajectory, okay? Th this, this oh. one? What do I, can you help me? I, I, I'm really afraid of, yeah.
Hmm. Okay, now I need to make some changes because I it's going slower than I thought, but... Okay, I can still talk about this. Okay, so but uh, let me tell you one thing. Esposito van den Broek, did we read it or not? Be honest. You didn't, right? Okay, I know there are too many classes and there are like, like okay, too many, too many things to do. But it's, it's really, I mean, to understand something like that at the level of something, this is, as I said, I mean, this is ongoing research and this is serious research. So we need to be able to sort of, for example, just reply like directly what it takes to have non-equilibrium steady state or how to write down like a trajectory because we are now going to define something called current. It's a function, anti-symmetric increment function. So in these, I mean, it's, it's gonna be mathematically precise. We are gonna understand it, but we need to be able to physically understand it, okay? Okay, perfect. So given a trajectory, we can actually define a new quantity that would allow us to count this net you know, transition rates. Transition rates is basically encoding the jumps that you're making from one state to another, okay? So this is jumping, this is the transition rate from the state x prime to x. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. Um, let's say this one. So we are counting. And don't forget the word of counting because actually, I mean, maybe it's gonna change, but we, one of the questions in the homework is actually dependent on full counting statics, statistics. And we are gonna see why it's called counting statistics, but okay. Mm. So let me actually label this by, for example, I or J. Yeah, okay, J. So J equals zero is encoding this X zero, T zero, okay? J equals N is encoding this one. And our trajectory is encoded starting from J equals one to J equals N, okay? So I'm defining this um, in terms of this J's. So I'm going to write it like this one, starting from J equals one to N. How do you count jumps from one state to another? This is something that you can encode in terms of direct delta functions, right? If you're making a jump from x prime to x, you need to basically write down the direct delta function that specifies that at that point in time, if you're making a jump from x prime to x, then you're gonna get a counting, a count, one count, only if you're making that transition. So this is why we're using direct delta function. And this whole term itself is gonna come in terms, of, yes? Exactly. By the influence of, by the influence of that uh, V. Exactly. Okay, okay. Exactly, yes, yes, exactly. So when I use this, um, this script V over here, it means that, yes, exactly, it's under the influence of uh, heat bath V. Okay, you can have like, I don't know, if we want to be at kind of like heat bath and they're all fixed at some inverse temperature beta V. We want them to be also, another point, we want them to be at different temperatures. You're gonna keep them at the non-equilibrium steady state. And the idea is that basically, I mean, everything interesting in the world happens because there is conflict. You're coupled to two heat baths. They have their own temperature. They want to dictate their own temperature. They're stretching you like that. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna go out of equilibrium, right? So this is like the intuitive explanation. Like this. Maybe I can put this one. Um, J, X, J. Hmm, do I need to put something different? Yeah, okay, the heat bath. Okay, this is basic, uh huh? Can you speak, uh, I don't understand the delta, delta of what? Delta, what are the two screens? Uh, I think it's the Kronecker Delta. Kronecker so. Delta, yeah. So Sorry, the second Delta the... should not be there, probably. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, I mean... If you look at what you wrote, uh, probably the second Delta should not be there. The sec no, no, but this is, um, I mean, this, this, the second Delta encodes the fact that you're jumping from some X prime to X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the way you wrote, uh, there 
is uh, delta. The delta should be a comma. The second delta should be a comma. The, the here or no, 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 no. Previous part. Okay, this one. Okay, okay, okay. This one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about it. Um, no, no, but it's okay. I mean, uh, it's just a notation okay. issue. So. Okay, let's think. Of, yeah, okay. Anyways, yeah. So basically, um, hmm. I will argue that it's actually true, but because you need to keep. It should not be delta. I mean, it's quite facilitated. Do you see it? Maybe. <laughs> so. This is a delta saying that x prime j minus 1 should be equal to x, right? So this delta should not Oof, be that. I'm, okay. I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. I, thought, okay. I apologize. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Just, <laughs> okay. okay. I was thinking that maybe you weren't like, yeah, maybe I was getting something here That's wrong. But okay. I'm thinking, no, 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 you need to keep track of this. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. Okay. Do you, do you see? Okay. Let me... Erase this. Okay. I'm going to take this one over here and then write it again, okay? You see this? Sound? Okay, I'm going to do some over this. Okay, is it okay or should I go bigger? Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, this is something that you use to uh, count the transitions between states. So we understand what this means physically, right? Oh, I'm happy, okay, I see heads nodding, I get, I get really happy. Okay, now, here comes the definition of current, something that we didn't actually define uh, before, I think, in this context. So, of course, there is an implicit dependence on the trajectory of these things, right? So, let me not then lose notation. So, now we are summing over Vs, if you realize, okay? Because we are going to call it something, I'm going to define what it's called. something important. Okay, this is what we call a generalized accumulated current. As you go through a trajectory, we have the trajectory dependence, okay? So what is this? Did we define this? We didn't define this. So this is actually the only one imposition on how you define a current function. Okay, the current function is incredibly general, okay, but there is only one imposition that you need to satisfy, and it is this one, on this one. You're taking this and impose this. This is a minus, okay? So what does this mean? So this, this component over here, it allows us to actually count the state. If there's a question, I can definitely take it. Question? Can you repeat what are xj and okay, the the xj this, prime? Okay, the thing that, okay. So this is how we write the master equation. Okay, maybe I should, I should have used Y. I apologize for that. Yeah, this is how I got used to it. But these are two different states, okay? This is basically something that tells you that you're jumping from X prime to X, okay? So I say that let's use J to actually keep track of these numbers. So this is basically how you're labeling J. J equals zero gives you this part of a trajectory. J equals one gives you this part of trajectory. And your, the trajectory that you encode is basically going from time t equals zero to time t equals some big t, finite t, 
Okay, so the finite, uh, the final um, value of j is equal to it equals n. Okay, so when you write this kind of a thing by Kronecker delta, what you're keeping track of is that you want to count the net number of transitions between states, right? A longer trajectory. Okay, that's why you're summing. Yes, great. Okay, that's why you're summing from j equals one to n. We should have made it two hours. We should have made it two hours, I said, the TUIs. Um, well, we yeah. Okay, okay. No, but no, 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 it's not, I have time, no. I was just making a comment. I was getting your feedback. Okay. Is that the current is defined in terms of, is not the net number of state transitions. Rather, um, uh, at each state transition, you have an originating state, the initial state, and a final one. We want a function of those two things, your initial state and the final state. The only restriction is that that function's got to be anti-symmetric. If I were to do the same transition the other way, then I get negative. The current, is the way that that term is used in this literature, is the sum total of that transition, of that function, which is defined at each transition, along all the transitions in a trajectory. The trajectories are themselves random variables. The number of transitions there will be, as well as the transitions themselves, are going to vary from one run of the experiment to the other. So everything that's going to be um, talked about here is the um, averages of these currents where you're averaging this accumulated number, this accumulated sum of this function of each transition along a given trajectory, you are averaging that over all of the trajectories. So as uh, Gilda was emphasizing, it's a very, very general beast. Current in the sense that you and I normally think of it, like a number of electrons accumulating at a, at a one side at a you know, plus terminal um, minus, the, um, uh, minus the ones that left at the negative terminal, that is a current. Water flow is a current, but it's really very, very weird things can be a current. For example, the, it's a valid current to say the uh, change in the opinion of the people in this room about, um, uh, I don't know whether it's um, uh, dark outside or not. If you have that going, uh, they give it a plus one if you think that it's actually now becoming dark, and a minus one if you think of it's now not becoming dark, that is a current. I think the easiest example is that you're, you have a coin, you're flipping a coin. Every time you, you get heads, just add one. Every time you get tails, just get minus one. Um, well, it's got to be the same coin that's going along. Once it becomes a head, but, but you're, okay, yeah, okay. it's not ID. It's once you get a head then you would go back the other way and that would give you a negative. Okay, and more going thermodynamic, I think one of the things that we can do to make sense of this kind of a thing is that this is basically an, what we call an anti-symmetric increment, okay? It can come in different forms and the way that it comes in different forms is how we generate different expressions for currents, okay? So for example, let's say that e, of e, e x prime is actually corresponding to the energy that you have in state x prime, and also E x is the energy that you have in the state x. So something like this, if you put it here, upon this description, what you're gonna get is actually something like a net heat flow, okay? Along that particular Along that part, um, but, but I mean, it, yeah, of course, I mean, it's always along that particular trajectory or we, don't, we wouldn't be discussing stochasticity in currents. That's why I'm, I'm always, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I try to put it here, 
and we have this dependence on trajectory. Okay? So with all that certainty, the intuition behind these things, what we're talking about. Um, let's look at a current. How many hands say yes? <laughs> Clear to people what a current is? Okay. Okay, but um, so from now on, I, yes. Mm -hmm. I think there is something wrong in the number of particles hoping from x to x prime to the bad p because we have x j prime, but the transfer from x prime to x, like the rays. Uh, yes. And you need to keep track of like at which step of the trajectory you're jumping from where to where. That's why you're using some label like j. Yeah. Okay. But what's x j prime? Because we have defined x1, x2. Okay. X, but, but I said that J, I mean, if it's not clear, you can just take it like that. Instead of B, you're using J. Okay. 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 Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. But I'm still going to argue, but anyways. Okay. Okay, let's go like that. So now I need your help because I taught um, that would be like a one hour of a class because we would be, I don't know, we would probably know how to deal with non-equilibrium steady states and sort of like how to, I don't know, I think. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe you didn't reply because, because of some shyness, but yeah. So I, I'm going to then try to go really, really slow, okay? And I'm going to do my best, but I need you to give me an incredible amount of feedback, okay? Please, please. What's the difference between an equilibrium and a non-equilibrium steady state? What is the definition? Not how is it achieved with baths, but what's the actual definition? Do people know? Okay, Z exactly so. So that's the crucial thing, that there's zero. So let's say you have a um, system with three states. I can have it be that the marginal distribution over those three states is not changing in time, but probability mass is cycling among, in those three states. That is a non-equilibrium steady state. If you're in an equilibrium there is no net probability flow going between any two particular states. That's the crucial thing. And the way it is actually achieved in practice is by having multiple baths. Okay? So part of the intuition that's going to be driving here is that entropy production goes up when you have very strong asymmetries in that non-equilibrium um, stationary state of moving the probability from one flow to another one. That's how you get it, that you get a lot of current. It's the current of the probability flow in the non-equilibrium steady state and the current of these um, operators that uh, Gilje was showing. It's a relationship between those two that's actually driving the thermodynamic uncertainty relation that is coupling the energetics of the process of being at the non-equilibrium steady state to the actual just transition values of the currents. Okay? Okay, now it's gonna go more smooth because there is one thing left. Okay, um, based on this one, yeah, I can. Yeah, just the right this. Okay. So one thing that we can emphasize at this point is that we know how we okay, do you have if you do you do have questions? Yes. Uh for D X X prime, uh how it is dependent of uh, V J. Like I didn't it, understand what uh, is D X X prime. 
the, the, the generalized accumulated current. Okay. Uh, it, it, it depends on uh, Vj. Like, I mean, in that, in that delta. Yes, it must, right? Yeah, no, I, I, Because uh, uh, you need to know that you have a state transition, right? You are jumping from one stage x prime to x, and there's a difference in energy, but let's say that you're coupled to different heat paths. If there was only one heat path, yeah, it would be trivial, but let's say that you ha you're coupled to different heat paths, and you, we labeled them to v1 to vn, blah, 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 and we labeled them by vj, and we want to know that which heat path is actually causing this transition, right? So you need to include this kind of a term here. That information is in uh, n nu, right? That information is in n nu, but also in this one. What's an example of a term like that? So both the f is nu in the n and the nu in the v have to match up with one another. So that j is actually kind of, it's a, a dj in the, in the sense that you know, or so that's that's correct. Any kind of a VJ, you don't have to think about it. You are summing all over all of these VJs when you're when you're actually defining your current. This is how we define a generalized accumulated current. Okay, you're co summing up all the contributions. Okay, so wait. It's a baby J, and this is a. Okay. Um, I. <laughs> okay, let's go with I. But I mean, from this point on, you're not even going to actually label these kind of things. Let's just keep it like that. This is a baby J, and yeah, this is a this is a big big J. I thought this was actually obvious, but okay. Um, Okay, yeah. Sorry about that. So I will I will be careful with the with the labels, okay? So what you want to do when you're computing the current, the total current is that you have heat vat 1 and then heat vat 2. System is making a jump from one state to another. You want to keep track of like this jump, you know, okay, this jump is happening, but due to which coupling, okay? And when you're computing the current over a trajectory, you need to keep track of, or they, you know, account for all the jumps that are occurring due to any of the heat path couplings. That's why you're, you're, you have to sum over Vs, and once you sum over Vs, you're basically get, getting this, all of these contributions, this current, mini, mini baby. You can think of like this baby currents from one heat pad and then the other heat pad. But once you write down the complete generalized accumulated current function, what you want to have is that all of these contributions, the sum of these contributions, okay? Is it clear or not? I mean, this is something that we, we've been doing with the master equation, right? So it shouldn't be that. Is it is it familiar or not? Yeah. We labeled with Vj the heat path the with Vj the. Okay. We labeled with Vj the number of the heat path that's causing the jump uh, between uh, xj and xj plus one. Yes. So that's what we are labeling with Vj. I actually okay. say this sentence. Yeah, yeah. I remember it when I define the trajectory. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, but thanks for reminding okay. that. I think it makes things clear. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> exactly, Thank no, but that's, that's great. And it is, I mean, we know, this is the case. If you're making a transition because it, 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 it's, you know, like this J equals T, equals, let's say, I don't know, three, then basically you need to account for the contribution of the bad that makes you jump at t equals three, okay? And this is just an abbreviation for that, okay? Okay, so after that, one thing that we can do 
is, okay, we talked about thermodynamic uncertainty relations, we talked about fluctuation theorems, and we know how to write down fluctuation theorems, right? You're basically using the probability distributions of like, you run the movie forward and you're generating like this, you have this increase in the entropy, okay, the entropy change, and then you run the movie backward and you're having an decrease in entropy, but we all care about the entropy production as a random variable itself, and the, just the probability distribution that is characterizing entropy production, right? But in a thermodynamic uncertainty relations, there are two components. When I actually started this, this lecture, I tried to emphasize it. There are some, for example, joint fluctuation theorems that not only say some things about the statistics underlying the entropy production behavior, this entropic behavior of the system, but also currents that contribute to this change in the entropy as you evolve through a trajectory, okay? So thermodynamic uncertainty relations include these two terms. Um, basically, one of them is the average entropy production that you accumulate, okay? And the other one is this one. The variance of the current divided by the mean square of the current. This is called the precision, okay? You want to keep this as low as possible. You have a comment? Okay. Okay, so we're, I'm gonna put like the prototypical bounds here, but I mean, you can also write this as, okay, again, emphasizing your system is evolving starting from zero to finite t, okay? looks like that. Did I forget something? No. Okay. Okay. You, um, okay, not for today, but for the exam. Okay, I'm talking for the exam right now. We know, we should know, we must know how to write down things like this. Entropy production average entropy production, like trajectory, current, and so on and so forth. Because this is like the, the central, like the, this is the core of stochastic thermodynamics. This is the foundation. Even if you don't do stochastic thermodynamics, even if you hate stochastic thermodynamics, I think it just gives you an idea about how the model thinks, right? So, so we should be able, I mean, I'm saying this is a TA right now that we must probably know how to write these kind of things. Oopity. Okay, everyone is okay with this? Okay, okay, perfect. So now we are going to take sort of like this historical walk, but it's a, like a really brief history because the first TUR was discovered in 2015. <clears throat> this is something that you can find and I guess the, right now there's a textbook on introduction to stochastic thermodynamics by Luca Pellicci, I guess. And th th these are things that you can find in textbooks. These are things that you can find in articles, but I'm going to provide them just to give an idea. Mean square. So they come in this form. This is the most general form. This is the first one that people derived, again, in the realm of biochemical reactions, okay? This is the precision term, okay? This is the average entropy production that you incur as you evolve the system in a time interval from zero to T, okay? And what does this say is, okay, 
Do you have an intuition, combining with the first verbal statements that I had in the lecture, do you have an intuition about what this says? Oh my god, I'm a terrible lecturer, probably. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Um, so do you remember the question that I posed here, right? There is a relation between the situation and the mind. Yeah, okay. So just thinking about the positions of this, you know, this is inverse entropy production, right? So if you want to have large precision, what do you want to have or vice versa? Yes, exactly. There's a trade-off between precision and dissipation, right? You're paying with dissipation if you want to have precision. This is what, okay, if someone just asks you in 20 years, even if you don't remember anything from, I don't know, this moment of your lives, you can think about it as like this, okay, what is a thermodynamic uncertainty relation? It's a relation between precision and dissipation, and if you want to be more precise, then you're going to pay thermodynamically, okay? And the payment is done in terms of entropy production, okay? Okay, so this is one form of it. So I told you that you can apply different thermodynamic uncertainty relations to different settings, right? So it means that, okay, we define a different set of things by imposing different conditions on how the system evolves dynamically in some finite time interval. And this only works for a specific set of physical scenarios. If you are in non-equilibrium steady state, you can use this. Time independent driving, okay? So by the way, I'm using always this term driving, driving protocol. Do you know, I mean, how we can sort of like driving the system or is it just like yeah for example great okay so what we think about uh, when it comes to driving um, you know like a thermodynamic you know like this system in a thermodynamic process is that and a thermodynamic process is I think it can be formally defined by two components this I was having a problem with because it was so amorphous to me. Then I read um, Chris Jarzinski's paper on actually the first like this derivation of detailed fluctuation theorems from um, finite bath formalism that we are gonna discuss at some point in time. So he gives a definition of thermodynamic process as a composition of three components. Okay, you have a system of alpha and some heat reservoirs that are fixed at some different, you know, that are fixed at some temperatures. So beta I, okay, and they are fixed at some temperature. So they, they, they have their own equilibrium distributions that are characterizing themselves. This is the first one. And we're talking about a thermodynamic process. So if you don't couple the system and the reservoirs, you're not gonna have something like that, right? So, so establishing and breaking coupling with the thermal reservoirs. This is one part of a thermodynamic process. And the other one is this is mostly how it's symbolized a lambda. It's a control parameter, okay? And it is basically, yeah, external force, external field. Apply a magnetic field. This is what we call a driving protocol. This set of functions of t, little t, time. Okay? This is a, yeah. But um, yeah, sometimes, I don't know, some sources say that these two of them is also a driving protocol. So when I say we're driving the system, we need to think about two things. Establishing breaking contact with thermal reservoirs and just using an external work parameter. This third element here, basically, yeah, it basically yeah, corresponds to what you said. You have an external agent that is manipulating the system from outside, okay? So I talked about this because, 
yeah, we keep saying that, oh, at non-equilibrium non steady state, there's like this time-independent driving. But what if you actually want to do something different? Okay, consider some different types of driving, such as like periodic driving with some different conditions. One of the theories that work for the scenarios, because this is incredibly strict, you can't believe how strict this is. Yeah, non-equilibrium steady state is cool, but it's comprising a really baby subset of scenarios, okay? Are we out of time? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that something is certainty. The um, lambda of t, where does that appear in the equations, for example, on the left that's behind Gulder right now? It's an argument of the W. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about um, uh, doing work on the system, the way that that manifests itself in this, this stochastic thermodynamics formulation here is by changes of W. And so lambda of T is just a way of encapsulating that. So it's actually W of lambda of T. Okay? Okay. So, yeah, something different that you can have if you sort of like make this condition a bit more flexible, but not too much flexible, is something like this. It's a, yeah, it's a weaker bond, but you're actually making this condition flexible. What you wanna do is to sort of like see what kind of physical scenarios you're allowed to apply these TURs for, okay? This is called, I don't know, like this, this is the original TUR, NESS TUR. This is called something that I plan to drive, but probably not today because we are gonna be using joint um, fluctuation theorems and so on and so forth, joint fluctuation theorems of entropy production and current. So it's a fluctuation theorem of two random variables, okay? The fluctuation theorems that we saw yesterday, they only comprise one random variable, which is entropy production. Now we need to also, we want to also account for some other random variable or variables. We are gonna start with two, like entropy production and one current that contributes to this entropy production. When I say contributes, just think about the definition of the, of the current and the definition of non-equilibrium st steady states. So here's the thing. Um, NESS identified by non-zero, let's say. Zero current or non-vanishing currents is, I think it's better. Entropy production. Non-zero entropy production, okay? So these are all the same thing, okay? So when you have non-zero entropy production, there are some non-vanishing currents contributing to that non-zero entropy production. This is the idea. We want, to take, take, we want to keep track of these currents. Okay, this is something called GTUR or FTUR. Mm, I mean, it, it first went with the name of like generalized thermodynamic uncertainty relations, but then I think it, it's now called fluctuation theorem, like thermodynamic uncertainty relations, because it is basically uh, using in its derivation this joint fluctuation theorem of currents and entropy production. Okay? So depending on the time, I am either stepping here and getting feedback from you, because I think I must know where you're standing, how you're feeling, and so on and so forth. Because I'm also, I also get started to, I also started to get scared about the homework. Like, how do you feel about the homework? If we had, yeah, if we, if we have some hard time with like this kind of a thing, then maybe I can do extra restation hours. We can have discussions. I can do so many things for you, just ask me, okay? And if you want, we can actually slow down with the schedule itself so we don't maybe have to talk about some really, you know, like thermodynamics of computation, like in all by like itself, in, in its own profundity, okay? I think it's better to understand this kind of principles right now. So I want you to give me feedback. You can tell me how terrible of a lecture I am. It's also allowed. So, but yeah, please give me feedback. So how do you feel about this kind of a thing? Do you think it's, how, 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 what is the pace for you?
Yes. I think the notation is confusing because we saw like master equation, but with more applied examples on, on ion channels or other things, and not, and not like in the general form. So that's what part of what confuses me. Okay, because you had a course on stochastic thermodynamics, but from I don't know, like this. Yeah, again, iron on a bead and so on and so forth, like more like the continuous, like the, the, the like an Uda cipher approach, I guess, yeah. So but I, I you, think mm -hmm. the, the notation part is like the, the most difficult because like I have to relate it to like what we saw in like, like. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's good. Okay, um, how can I make it easier for you? <laughs> Do you want to give me your previous lecture notes so that I will fix the notation for the upcoming lectures? I'm doing my best. <laughs> but can I? <laughs> okay. Do you want to come here, actually? Uh, yeah, I <laughs> think so your two previous lectures were awesome in the sense that, I mean, we already saw them, these subjects, but was an overview. So it was fast, but because we already saw that subjects, I think was good. This subject is new, uh, so that is a little bit harder because we didn't knew the subject. Okay. And just low the pace, so I think it's fine. I think I have to see again the lecture and then I can tell you if you are a good or a bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to see it again because, because if I didn't catch it because I'm too sleepy, that doesn't mean you mm -hmm. were bad, so I can tell you later. That was fair, yeah, but uh, so when I came to this class today, I assume that you know how to, I mean, because we provided you uh, the Vandenberg and Esposito, this holy book. I say that it's a holy book. I think he said something along these lines. It's, okay, it's like, a, okay. Its richness is like a book. Hi, Massimiliano. But yeah, um, so yeah, I taught when I was coming to class today yeah, I don't know, like most of the participants in the class today would be able to write down like this, for example, I don't know, like this master equation and tell directly without being shy, like non-equilibrium steady states, like how do we characterize them and so on and so forth. So it, yeah, it surprised me a bit, but I think this must be totally normal. So I'm shutting up right now, <laughs> but yeah. Um, please don't, okay, so a couple of things. It is crucial, everybody, please go through that paper by Christian van der Broek and Massimo Esposito. It is very easy to read. It's very clear. It does not have this kind of material in it. So that's the first thing. It'll talk about driving protocols, the stuff that I was interjecting. See, part of what's, um, th there's an issue that uh, there's an assumed language that's being used and so on, which would have been based upon you are having read that paper at a minimum. And if you haven't, then that kind of means that the language we're using doesn't really even make sense to you. So please do go through that article. There's also, you can find online, Paletti and Pigoletti, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to find the textbook okay. online. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is the holy paper. Yeah. I actually send it to Slack channel as well. So okay, yes. Okay. Okay. So there's, there's also a textbook online PDF by Naato Shureshi. No, it's not available yet. It, it was. It's the first draft. It's not available. Oh, not the final one, but the draft is available. It's pretty. It's yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. Okay. And so I would um, recommend also. Uh, no, David, David, it's not pedagogical. Let's not go with that. It's a whole book. This is a paper. Yeah, but if they need to, please, please. If please. they need it, let them come to me. I will do I, my I, best. I, I, I will get that. I'll get that. So if you also have questions about things that are not in that paper, take a look in the PDF as well. Now, something else I also want to emphasize. You have a resource. Gulja is one of the world's experts in thermodynamic uncertainty relations. She's done some very important good work in it. Very, very brilliant stuff. So exploiter, user. Take, take advantage of what she knows about these topics. It really is some very profound things, but it will be most effective if you first, at a minimum, have read Vanderbroek and Esposito, that paper. Okay? So I think, um, uh, anyway. Very much. So that's, um, 
Thanks, uh, thanks, cool job. So, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so, we have a question. We have a question and how is Corona conserving this process? I mean, I don't think Current, it's concert, but it's not concert, no. No, it's uh, not, of course. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell him, uh, no, I mean, no, I, no, 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 you're right.